Gospel of John. Chapter 7. Jesus was in the temple causing a great stir. Verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake, this spake he about the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost is not yet given, because that Jesus does not get glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of the truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Had not the scripture said that Christ come to the seed of David? And out of the town of Bethlehem, where Jesus was? Well, <clears throat> think about it. Either the scripture's right, and he's wrong. Or the scripture's right, and he's right. Some things have come to God, you're not sure of, ask him. Just ask him. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, some of the temple guards. But no man laid hands on him. Now we're back to where we left all the Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. And they said to them, Why have you not brought him? This was a blatant disobedience of a commandment. The temple guards worked for the temple and for the high priest and for the priesthood. And they were given a direct order to go take Jesus. And they come back without him. <laughs> We've got a serious problem here. <laughs> the officers asked the question, why have you not brought him? The officers answered, never man spake like this man. Imagine your problem. They're going to arrest Jesus and get stuck in the speech. And since they listen to him, they realize not only is he a prophet, but unlike any other prophet, any other man, he said, nobody ever spoke like this man. And how can we bring him in? Then answers them the Pharisees. Are you also deceived? This has to be the most insecure bunch ever in the history of man. <clears throat> Why don't they go confront him? You know? There's nothing that says the temple guards had to believe anything. They're guards. The story is even more amazing when you think about when Jesus went and cleansed the temple and turned over the money table changer, the money changers' tables, let loose the sacrifices the birds, the animals, so on and so forth, in the temple, made a whip, sort of beating folks. Those same temple guards were there present at that scene. Mm -hmm. And not a one of them laid their hands on him. And I think for one reason why, he said, <coughs> my father's house, right. <laughs> should be called a house of prayer for all nations. Mm -hmm. And you took my father's house and made it a den of thieves. Nobody stopped him. It showed the power and authority he had from God. I mean, this is Passover time. This is when the money 
It's the greatest money time of the year. And imagine him standing by and watching him flip over tables. I like to admit that. <laughs> I could be there today. Money going to <coughs> I don't think anybody even picked it up. Birds flying. Lambs running around the temple. And he's got a whip and beating folks. Regarding his father's house. Here's what I said, it's so insecure. Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? What a bunch of wimps. Right. There are people whose faith in God is dependent upon somebody else's faith. Mm -hmm. You should know God for yourself. Yeah. Hey, if nobody believes on him, I believe on him. Right. And if everybody denies him, I'm not. Amen. And these men is like no, uh, like no, nobody important has believed on him. So nobody important has believed on him. Then you know, then why should you? Mm -hmm. Jesus later told him, said the the, fairs, the the publicans and the harlots will go to heaven before you do, yeah. because they heard the gospel message, the good glad tidings of great joy, and embraced it and got saved. Mm -hmm. While this bunch sat back and tried to decide how important he was based on who believed. But these people, who know it's not the law, now let's blame the people. Now you guys just did your job. Has anybody notable believed on him? And you can't, it doesn't overlook the fact that you got a temple full of people who believe on him. How do you, how do you dismiss that? Well, they're all cursed. Because they, they don't know the law like, like we know the law. But if we don't know the law, you know this is the very Christ. If the people, the common man and woman recognize him as coming from God and as being a prophet sent by God. Why don't you guys who know the scriptures, know the prophecy, why don't you? There's an indictment against them. And those words shall be required of them by that prophet in the day of judgment. Nicodemus, I assume he's one of them, said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, Saying he can counsel. Does the law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? So how are we going to judge this man? Our law forbids us from judging somebody before we hear them. And how can you possibly judge him whom you have not heard? You sent temple guards to hear him and to arrest him so you can judge him and don't know what you're judging. We got to respect because they was here. The answer said to him, Art thou also of Galilee? What a cheap remark. What's that got to do with it? All Galileans stick together? <laughs> <laughs> or you, you, you must be a Galilee because you're on the inside. I'm telling you, they're the most frustrated, insecure group in the history of man. The answer said to him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went into his own house. Well, they're right. And he says the scriptures, it was nothing about out of Galilee arising a prophet. But it did say out of Bethlehem a prophet shall arise. And all they had to do, if they were any kind of men at all, they go up to Jesus and say, you didn't know right then. Sometimes people are ignorant and they want to be. That's right. When it comes to, I've, I've learned, I'm sure you all experienced too, and, and, and witnessed about Jesus. Some folks, you can't get across to who Jesus is because they don't want to know. Right. It was like Pilate said in, in the trial, when Pilate said, what is truth? Mm -hmm. Then he walked away. He didn't want to know. He had the truth sitting right in front of him. Had the opinion. I think if had he expressed any interest in what truth was, Jesus would have taken time and instructed Pilate, and Pilate could have gotten saved. Wow. But it's like the world today. You know, what, what is truth? It's not what I think it is, and therefore it's not truth, and I don't want to know what it is. Right. Wow. And folks like that, you can't even pray for them. Okay. You know, people say sometimes those that are me, you know, not as much as they, I don't see anybody these days, but just say, you know, pray for me. And I tell them no. 
I say, that's not God's system. God's not intended to save you by me praying for you. He intended to save you by knowing who Jesus is and get the facts about Jesus and then believe on him. And the only way you're going to get that is to come and hear about him. And I'm not going to pray for you while you sit home every Sunday and Wednesday expecting to pray for you to get saved. So maybe, I got real cold the last time I had it, went down that road. I said, maybe you should think about the fact that maybe God just don't want you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wasn't very really safe, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I had no recourse. <laughs> 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 <laughs>